In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is in our midst. He was, and is, and ever shall be. This morning, we continue our exaltation of the Holy Cross, and we continue our meditation on what the Holy Cross means, and how we apply what Jesus says to us, that those who wish to follow him must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. So the question we ask today is, what does it mean for us to take up our cross? This is something that is possible for anyone of any age to do, because to take up our cross, much of it is fearing God, that is, wanting to please Him. This, one saint says, is the cross of crosses, that is, to fear God and wanting to please Him more than we want to please ourselves. Taking up our cross includes never wanting to disappoint God. Taking up our cross means that when we think about wanting to please God, that means we act accordingly, seeking to live a holy life, purging our life of superfluous and vain and selfish things. This is self-denial. Taking up our cross is willingly putting aside even our personal necessities so to pursue God. Because in reality, most of our personal necessities are not really necessities, but things that we make into necessities because oftentimes we want to please ourselves. Taking up our cross is the fear of missing out of being with God and all the good things that God allows us to do with Him and all the good things that by our self-denial God can do to us. Taking up our cross is resolving to place our lives purely in God's hands and direction and providence. Freeing ourselves of any of these spiritual parasites that want to cling on to us and suck the life out of us, that is worry, that is anxiety, that is covetousness, that is enmity, that is pride, that is seeking our own comfort, anything that causes us to worry and causes anxiety, except for the desire to please God, these other things are spiritual parasites that do not give us life, but take life away from us and lead us possibly to be tempted to turn our lives to our own selves and to turn away from the cross and the way of the living God. St. John Cashin, a great saint in our church, gave an exercise about how to meditate on the cross. He says, Imagine yourself on a cross, an actual cross. Imagine your body and your arms and your legs immobilized. Imagine your death is certain and soon. And imagine there's no rescue. Then he asks, what would you feel? What would you think about? What would you be concerned about? <clears throat> no, because we're no longer to do what we please. All of our own desires have been taken away. Our end has been determined. We have no more self-interest. Giving up, we have to give up what we care, what we look like. Caring about our comfort, our entertainment, and our diversions. On this cross, our selfish impulses are dying and dead, on this cross, we are dead to all worldly cares. Our life is no longer in our control. Our wishes and desires would be affixed on God alone, dependence on God, 
would not be a theory, but something very real if we we're on our actual cross. This is not going with what the world counts as pleasant and delightful, but this is the way according to the law. On this cross, we would no longer consider the present. On this cross, we would no longer think about, we would no longer think about our own likings, but only think about what God likes. We would no longer be anxious about tomorrow. We would no longer care about the regrets of the past. And we would no longer care about our possessions. A Christian, St. John Cassian says, on the cross will only care and look to Christ. He will, be, he will be freed from pride and envy and rivalry and strife and jealousy and anger, and he will not have the desire nor the ability to, to exact any revenge, even on those who have put him on that cross. And this is what St. John Cashin concludes with. He says that the life on the cross and the life of meditating on the cross, the life of doing this exercise, is the healthy life. It is the organic way of life that God created us to have. This is the healthy life that is against the wisdom and the foolishness of the world. This crucified life is the life of freedom. This crucified life is the life of simplicity. The crucified life is calling us all the time. Because by calling us to be dead to the world, Jesus is doing us all a favor. And by through the cross, he has given us life, given us the way to our eternal life, given us the ability and the tool to follow him to the heavenly kingdom so that we may be with him forever and ever to the ages of ages. Amen.